Well, hello again. Grandpa Phil here. I got a few more parts to this story that I've been reading called Hank the Cow Dog and Monkey Business. Last time I read to you, why Hank was in a heck of a situation. The little boy on the ranch had let him in the house and he had made a wrong turn and ended up in the bathroom where the mama was taking a bath. Well, this scared the dickens out of him because he couldn't get out of there. The little boy, the ornery little cuss that he is, he closed the door. So the dog was locked up in the room in the bathroom with Mama, and she's chasing the dog around naked and screaming at him and throwing things. And then the little boy opened the door. Well, Mama's right smart, and she figured out what was going on, and she grabbed the little dickens and busted his behind. Well... The next chapter is called Democracy in Action on the Ranch. But wait a minute. Before I get started, you remember I told you that Hank shared a secret about how to control a dog with the monkey, and now the monkey's using it against him? Well, I heard a secret too. I'm going to share it with you, but I don't think you're going to use it against me. I want to say hello to some young ladies that are watching this. Two of them are twin sisters that had a birthday. That's Scarlett and Vivian. And, of course, big sister George is watching, too. I want to say, happy birthday to you. And I hope it was a really good day. Okay? And thank you for watching this. I hope you get some good out of it. So this is chapter 10. It's called Democracy in Action on the Ranch. So maybe we'll learn something here. Within seconds, I had made a pass through the house and taken cover in the darkness beneath Sally May's bed. It was a tight squeeze, but I managed it. In the darkness, I listened to the rumble of battle. Sally May had wrung a full confession out of little Alfred and he had been thrashed for it. Now justice had been served. In the darkness, wait a minute, I read that already. Sorry about that. Now get your clothes on, Alfred. I have a dentist appointment in 40 minutes. Now find that dog and throw him out. And I thought, throw me out of the house? Well, I had news for little Alfred. There's no way he was going to hand me out from under this bed and throw me out especially with that monkey out there. I had made a new discovery about monkeys, don't you see? I don't like them at all. I had these thoughts in my mind when I heard a voice. Hi, Hank. Did you get in trouble with Sally Mae? It was Drover's voice, and it was very near. My eyes probed the darkness and saw only darkness. I asked him, Are you under this bed? He said, yeah, are you? Well, of course I am, and for very good reason. I was being flogged by a naked woman with a wet towel. What's your excuse? Well, it sounded like things were getting hot in the bathroom, and I thought, why, well, you thought you'd take the chicken's way out and hide under the bed, right? He said, well... And so you left one of your former friends to be mauled in a locked bathroom. I don't suppose it ever occurred to you to stick around and help, did it? Well, it did occur to me, but I thought it was a pretty bad idea. Well, this will go on your record, Drover, and believe me, it won't go unpunished. Oh, drat. But anyway, we're safe from that crazy monkey. I knew he'd end up causing trouble. Well, yes, and so did I, Drover. I hope you've learned a lesson from all this. I, I, I guess I have. Uh, never trust a monkey in a red hat. Exactly. And furthermore, suddenly I heard footsteps on the floor. Small feet wearing shoes. Little Alfred was looking for us. We froze, hardly daring to breathe or move a muscle. The footsteps came into the bedroom and moved about. They stopped beside the bed. I held my breath and I waited. 
The boy's eyes appeared beneath the dust ruffle. They seemed to be upside down. Yes, of course they were, since he had tilted it. Well, I thought we were goners because he looked straight at me, but apparently it was too dark under there for him to see us. The eyes disappeared. The little footsteps moved into the living room, and little Alfred said, Mom, I can't find the doggies. Well, Sally Mae was crashing around in the other end of the house. Well, we don't have time to look. We've got to leave right in this minute. If those dogs make a mess, wild. Well, well, she didn't finish her sentence, but she didn't need to. I had already made a mental note that while in her house, we would make no messes. When she came home, we would be lying on the rug beside the back door, minding our own business and guarding her house against robbers and fiends. No messes, not even one. She would be so proud of us. Then I heard the back door slam. The car started and went roaring up the hill in front of the house. And then silence. So I inched my way out from underneath the bed. I heard the back door slam. I'm sorry, I went back to the wrong paragraph. So I inched my way out from underneath the bed. All right, Grover, you can come out now. The coast is clear. How can you have a coast without an ocean? Boy, that dog. What? Well, he sneezed. I said, it sure is dusty under there. Tears up my sinuses. Are you saying that Sally Mae doesn't clean under her beds? Are you suggesting that she isn't a good housekeeper? Get to the point, Grover. He sneezed again. I don't know the point, but I does is all stopped up. Well, let me remind you that a stopped up nose is a small price to pay for being safe inside the house away from the monkey. Why, I thought you two were friends. Me? Friends with a monkey? Drover, I never trusted the little whelp, not for a moment. He sniffed his nose. That was all that stuff about you being the grand great potentate. I stared at the little runt. Great grand potentate. I don't know what you're talking about. You must have been dreaming. <laughs> Though I wasn't dreaming. You said you were the great grand potentate and a lumpy bucky was your captain of the guard. Rubbish. Come on, let's make a pass through the house and check things out. We're in charge now. I crept out of the bedroom and I peeked out the door. I looked around in all directions and started into the living room to give it a security sweep. Drover was right behind me, walking on tiptoes and checking things out with big moon eyes. Hank, can monkeys open the door and come into houses? He's worried about whether that monkey's going to know how to open that door. I crept. Drover was behind me. He's lathering all the time. I stopped. I said, what? He repeated the question. Translated into common non-sinus language, it meant, Hank, can monkeys open the doors and come into houses? It was your typical dumb drover type question. But don't be ridiculous. We're safe inside the house, and I wish you'd stop asking silly questions. What's the answer? The answer, which is obviously obvious to everyone but you, is no, monkeys cannot now and never have been able to open doors and come into houses. How do you know? I know because, well, because it's the law, Drover. Or if it's not, it should be, and it will be. We live under a system of laws, not monkeys. No monkey is above the law, and no law is below a monkey. That's right smart of him, isn't it? He ran his eyes around the room. Baby so, but Hank, I feel a little scared myself. I don't ever want to see that bucky again. Nor do I, but that's my whole point, Drover. The law is here to protect us, to give us feelings of security, right? 
And laws are made by mature, responsible individuals, right? Hence, we will put the democratic system to work and pass a law against monkeys. Well, I be dirt. I never would have thought of that. I gave him a fatherly smile, which is only one of many reasons why you're not the head of security at the ranch. Come on, let's get this thing signed into law and then we can relax. I'll give you a little lesson in government. So we went into the living room and I hopped up in that big rocking chair over by the east window, just below the hanging plant. I told Grover to sit on the floor in front of me. So I, <clears throat> I cleared my throat and I stuck a, struck a dignified pose. He's all full of himself, you see. The chair will now entertain a motion from the floor. Drover gave me a blank stare. You mean that chair's going to dance on the floor? No, that's not what I mean. Well, you said entertain, and I just thought, are you trying to make a monkery of our system of government? To hold a proper election, we must have a chair that recognizes a motion from the floor. I never heard of a chair that could recognize anything. Forget about the chair, Drover. It's just legal terminology. Now, you make a motion from the floor. After giving me another blank stare, he stood up and walked around in a circle. How's that? I said, what are you doing? He said, making a motion, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. No, incorrect. Absolutely wrong. A motion from the floor, Drover, is whatever it is that we're fixing to vote on. Oh, well, I'll vote for that. Not yet. We still don't have a motion, you brick. Well, how much emotion do you want? Sometimes, oh, well, I managed to hold my temper. Drover, listen to me. Don't think. Just say your part. I don't know my part. Hush and listen. When the chair calls for a motion, you will say, the floor moves that monkeys cannot possibly open doors or enter houses. That's all there is to it. Are you ready? I guess. All right, the floor is open to motions. I waited and got nothing from Drover. Well, is that chair really going to talk to me? No. I am the chair and you are the floor. Well, this is crazy. Just say your lines, Drover. Okay, let's see. The floor is moving around and monkeys can't come into this house. Well, that's close enough. The floor has made the motion and the chair will second it. All in favor say aye. So we both said aye. Motion has carried by unanimous vote of all present. Congratulations, Drover. We have taken self-government to the dogs. Sure looks that way to me. So as a result of this solemn action, all at once my right ear shot up and I cut my eyes to the side. Did you hear something? Yes. Describe the sound. A door opening and a door closing. Suddenly, I noticed a certain dryness of mouth. It must be the wind, Drover. Of course it was the wind. What else could it be? It appeared that Drover's eyes had begun to cross. The monkey? Impossible. There's laws against... And then we heard the voice. Duggies! Where are you, Duggies? Pasha comes for you. Huh? Okay, now we're on chapter 11. Pasha, that's the monkeys that he says his name is Pasha. He breaks the law and other things. Oh boy, this don't sound good. Drover, it occurs to me that the dunce had fainted, I mean flat out on the floor. It occurs to me that I am dreaming. I squeezed my eyes shut. This is only a dream. 
I don't believe in monkeys, and what's happening here is against the law and therefore impossible. I repeat, this is only a dream. With that out of the way, I opened my, and there he stood. Red hat, red jacket, big grin on his face, evil wickedness in his eyes, crooking his finger at me, telling me to, no way, I was gonna, holy smokes, I was trapped. I tried to dive under the couch. Nope, I ran around in a circle, but found that was just going in circles. Makes sense. I barked. Squeaked, actually. Sometimes dreams can be more real than moisture on my leg. Not just moisture, wetness, water. I knocked over, or shall we say the antique lamp on the end table fell over and crashed to the floor. I took dead aim for the underside of Sally Mae's bed, but didn't quite make it. He grabbed me by the ears and shook my head so hard it turned my eyeballs around backwards. And then he said, I am Pasha of Shazam, and you are my slave. You're a monkey's uncle, and lom, 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 lom. He got me by the tongue again, see? Do not call me a mink minky. I am not the minky. I am Pasha. Lom, lom, lom. You have taught Pasha good trick. Sees tongue of dog and pull hard. Good treat, yes. Pasha like treat. Whoom. Drover let out a groan. Oh, my gosh. I just had a terrible dream. I was locked in a house with a monkey. Pasha released my tongue and swaggered over to little Drover and booted him in the tail section. Do not say minky. Get up and be slave for Pasha. Oh, my gosh, it's him. I thought it was a, Hank, what are we going to do? Uh, get up and be a slave for Pasha. What do you think? You mean, I mean, we've been captured by a monk, uh, by the Pasha of Shazam. He almost said monkey again. But I thought we voted. You'd better do what he says, Drover, before you get your tongue yanked out by the roots. Pasha glanced at me and grinned. Very good, you understand, Pasha. The smile slipped into a snarl, and he raised one hairy little finger in the air. Now you listen to Pasha. Pasha is hungry, want food very much. Yeah, well, if you'll open up that back door, Pasha will run to the machine shed and get you some dog food. Great stuff. Co-op, you'll really... He shook his head. Pasha not eat dog food. You fool, Pasha want Pasha food. Uh, yes, I see, Pasha food. In that case, I suggest you open up the refrigerator and check it out. What meaning is refrigerator? Pasha not no refrigerator. Here, follow me. I head for the kitchen. Passing by a drover, I whispered, Play along with him. I've got a plan. The drover said, Oh, good. Shh. I marched into the kitchen and stood in front of the refrigerator. Here you are, your worthy worship. Pasha's eyes lit up. I like that, your worthy worship. He's very good, yes. Nothing but the best for you, Pasha of Shazam. Now with your hands, you can open that door. That's right, just grab the handle and pull. He pulled and the door swung open. My eyes darted over the contents until I found what I had hoped would be there. I pointed toward two amber bottles near the bottom. My plan was beginning to unfold. You see, whilst the monkey was holding my tongue, I had remembered a song I had learned as a pup. The monkey, he got drunk and jumped on the elephant's trunk. The elephant sneezed and fell on his knees and what became of the monk, the monk, the monk? He's got a plan. You get the picture? Pretty clever, huh? Sometimes I even scare myself. The monkey, Pasha that is, reached a hairy little hand into the ice box and pulled out one of the bottles. He shook it, put it up to his ear, rolled it around in his hands and tried to take a bite out of it. Not good. Pasha not like these. 
too hard to chew. Uh, no, your majesty, you don't eat it. You twist off the lid and drink it in one big gulp. Pasha grumbled around for a minute and then twisted the lid. It fizzed and spewed in his face. He didn't like that. What is the thing that spits in Pasha's face? I chuckled. Why, that's soda pop, Pasha. You'll love it. Just gulp it down and you'll be the happiest monk. Oops. He came over to me and he didn't look too happy. You said minky. Pasha is not minky. Pasha is Pasha. Yes, well, uh, hush my mouth. I never should have. Stick out your tongue. Well, old stupid me had said the wrong word and now I was going to get another tongue twisting. But that was okay because my plan was working to perfection. I opened my mouth and stuck out my tongue and prepared myself. Huh? I was definitely surprised when the monkey stuck the bottle in my mouth and turned it up. I mean, I thought he was going to sure was fizzy and foamy. And I can't say I liked the taste of it very much, but I either had to swallow it or drown. I swallowed and then did some serious burping. The monkey pitched the empty bottle over his shoulder and gave me a smile. Now, if this is poison, you will die and Pashi will watch. For some reason, I started laughing. No, it isn't poison, Poisha. Just a little old bottle of soda pop. You'll see, won't he, Drover? Hank, you're sure talking funny. Huh? Speak up, son, you're mumbering. Say, did anyone ever tell you that you have two heads and two faces? Because you do. Hank, are you feeling okay? Huh? I never felt better in my whole life. Drover, just seeing doubles all. I turned my bleary eyes to Pasha. You know what? You look just so like a monkey to me. His eyebrows shut up and a grin curled on one side of his mouth. It is not poison. It is something else. You better believe it, Charlie, and I don't believe you're monkey enough to drink one lum lum lug lum. He grabbed my tongue again and pulled it out with one hand and spanked it with the other. I am not a minky. You will not call me a minky, but I will drink one nevertheless. So whilst I was getting my tongue sorted out and stuffed back into my mouth, he reached in and got the second bottle, twisted off the cap, turned it up, and chugged it down. He pitched the empty bottle over his shoulder, and it crashed into a thousand pieces on the floor. He burped and shook his head. It does not work for me. I feel nothing. Now I will find something else to it. He turned back to the refrigerator and fell into the second shelf amongst the fresh spinach leaves and radishes from Sally May's garden. I thought that was about the funniest thing I'd ever seen. I laughed like a fool so hard I stumbled into the kitchen table and, well, sort of knocked the jelly jar and sugar bowl off in the floor. Old Pasha climbed out of the spinach and came up wearing a big silly grin. Eat these very strange, these soda pop stuff. Oh, I howled at that, laughed like crazy, right up to the moment when the first egg hit me between the eyes. Hey, are you throwing eggs at me? Somebody around here is throwing splat eggs at me, splat. I did it, Pasha laughed. Twas I who threw them. Why, you sorry outfit. I was laughing so hard I could barely talk. I had eggs dripping down into my eyes. I'll fix your wagon. I swept my paw through the jelly that had spilled on the floor and rubbed it into Pasha's face and hair. Howling with laughter, we wrestled around, rolled into the refrigerator, and somehow managed to collapse a couple of shelves, which explains how a gallon of milk ended up spreading across the kitchen floor. Drover was about to have a seizure. Oh my gosh, Hank. No, stop the floor. Sally Mae's going to kill us all. Oh, dry up, you little squawk box. She'll never suspect a thing. Pasha and I ended up on the bottom shelf with our arms around each other's shoulders. We had become the best of friends. It is what had happened in spite of the difference between us. 
He gave me a crooked smile. I have a confession to make. I am really a minky, not a pasha. In circus, I do tricks and beg for money. I'm only a beggar monkey. No kidding. Well, I have a confession to make, too. I'm really a dog, but I love this monkey business. I also love to sing, and I have an idea for a song about monkey business. His eyes lit up. You like to sing, yes? Maybe we sing together, yes? You got a deal, partner. Come on, Grover, let's tune up and knock the socks off this song. Grover had placed one paw over his eyes. Hank, Sally Mae's going to kill us. Well, the final chapter's coming up, and it's called The Firing Squad. Oh, boy, that sounds kind of ominous, doesn't it? Right serious. You birthday girls enjoying this? I am. The Firing Squad. Now, every creature on this earth needs a business to prove his worth, something to test his skills and express himself. You've got plumbers and cowboys and carpenters, butchers, bakers, and shaw sh saw sharpeners, guys who sack up groceries and stock the shelves. Your business kind of sets the tone of who you are and how you're known. And it's pretty important to pick one you understand. So get yourself a business, son. If you ain't there yet, I'll tell you one. And you'd better buy stock in this one while you can. Monkey business, monkey fun, monkey room for everyone. Enroll yourself today in monkey school. We've got a booming business here, depression-proof, owned free and clear. And all you've got to do is act a fool. Your local better business, folks. We'll probably tell you funny jokes and call our line of work a big charade. But the joke's on them, and it seems to me, when a truth's so very plain to see, that monkey business is everybody's favorite trade. So eat your heart out, Wall Street smarties. Take GM, we'll take our parties. And in ten years, we'll just see what we've done. We'll have show and tell. We'll have a quiz. I'll put my dough on monkey biz, cause fools outnumber wise men ten to one. How true. Monkey business, monkey fun, monkey room for everyone. Enroll yourself today in monkey school. You've got a booming business there, depression proof, owned free and clear, and all you got to do is act a fool. Oh yeah. You've got to play this game by funky monkey rules. Oh yeah. In monkey business, boys, just act a fool. Well, me and my monkey pal sang the heck out of that song. Had us a big old time. We not only made great contribution to music and culture, but we also notched up a few points for the brotherhood of all animals. I mean, there I was, a very important dog, socializing with a low-class monkey who went around begging nickels in the circus. The fact that I would stoop so low made my heart swell with pride and almost brought tears to my big old eyes. One of the advantages of being wonderful is that you can share it with others. Gives you a warm feeling inside. Well, me and Monkey had a great time together, but old sourpuss Drover sat through the whole thing and didn't sing a lick. When we finished, instead of cheering and shouting as any intelligent dog would have done, he started whining and moaning. Oh, when Sally Mae comes home, your monkey business is going to get us all killed. Well, I glanced around the kitchen, and it was a little messy now that he mentioned it. Relax, Grover. We got plenty of time. We'll get us a bite to eat and clean this mess up. Then our pal monkey will open the back door for us, and we'll all vanish into the sunset, so to speak. Right, monk? He nodded. See, nothing to worry about. Hank, I want out now. I'm scared. Okay, fine, and who cares anyway? Monk, go open the back door and let the runt out so he can play chicken with the chickens. Monk nodded, and they went to the back of the house. 
While they were gone, I turned to more important business. Among the items that had uh, somehow spilled out of the open refrigerator was a package of, hmm, hamburger. I gave it a good sniffing. Sure it did smell good, fresh meat. Of course, I knew that Sally Mae had thawed it out for, supper me for the supper meal, and I wouldn't have dreamed of, but on the other hand, hamburger doesn't keep well at room temperature, and I found my nose muz nuzzling at the wrapping paper. You know, I was sniffing it out, and by George, would you believe that the wrapping paper just fell off, leaving two pounds of fresh, juicy hamburger exposed to germs and dangerous microbes, and... Have you ever stopped to think about how dangerous microbes are to little children? They're very dangerous, and once germs have lit on a two-pound package of hamburger, why, it's next to impossible to get rid of them. About the only precaution you can take is to eat the hamburger right away, and I mean all of it. Otherwise, you have plague and disease and sick kids laying around everywhere. Well, you know where I stand on the issues of plague and disease. I'm 100% against them. And if I had my way, I'd abolish them completely. If a dog can't, and now this is for the record and you can quote me, if a dog can't protect the kids on his ranch from plague and disease, by George, he ain't much of a dog. So in a selfless effort to save the ranch from an outbreak of deadly microbial, microbosis, I began dispersing of the infected meat in large gulps. I heard the door slam, then footsteps on the floor. Hey, Monk, come here, son. I've got something. Now, those were pretty heavy footsteps for a monkey. I began to get this funny feeling that I was being stared at. You know how you get that funny feeling sometimes? Very slowly, I turned my head away from the pool of hamburger blood on the floor and the wreckage of the refrigerator, and the busted eggs, and the jelly smears, and I'd sure expected her to stay longer at the dentist's office. That dentist sure hadn't done much, you'd think. I, uh, whapped my tail on the floor and tried to, tried to squeeze up a smile. She was probably about to jump to a hasty conclusion. That was my impression. I could hear the air rushing through her nostrils, and suddenly her eyes... Where were my friends when I really needed them? I'd be the first to admit that Sally Mae and I had experienced our ups and downs. No relationship is easy, but never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that she would chase me around the house with hands that became like claws or drag me out from under her bed or take a loaded shotgun from the bedroom closet or tie a blindfold around my eyes carry both me and the gun down to the corrals or line me up against the fence and take up a position 20 paces away. Never in my wildest dreams, the drums began to roll. Ready? I heard the hammers click on the shotgun. Aim. Wait, Sally Mae, I think I can explain everything. There was this monkey, see, who escaped from the circus and turned into a terrible despotic pasha. Lies, lies. No, it's true, honest. And he forced strong drink upon me and made me do monkey business and terrible things and never in my wildest dreams. Hank, you'd better wake up. I've got some bad news. Drover, when she pulls that trigger, all the bad news will be bad because... Huh? Drover? I pried my eyelids open and stared at the runt. Why, you traitor. You backstabbing two-faced snake in the grass. You left me in the kitchen to face the firing squad alone. Firing squad in the kitchen? What are you talking about? I cut my eyes from side to side. It appeared that I was laying on my gunny sack bed under the gas tanks. The sun was shining, and best of all, I saw no traces of Sally Mae or her shotgun. With each new piece of evidence, it became clearer and clearer that I had just awakened from an incredible dream. I pushed myself up on all fours and I staggered around, waiting for the fog to lift, so to speak. 
from that area between my eyes and whatever it is that resides behind the eyes, brain, mind, data control center, whatever. Drover, let me ask you a question. To your knowledge, has there ever been a monkey on this ranch? Oh, yeah, he was in a box, and the box fell off the back of a circus truck. Okay, that checks out. Question number two. Did this alleged monkey ever reach into your mouth and pull out your tongue? Why, he sure did, after you taught him to do it. Strike that from the record. I ask about the monkey, not about me. Oh, yeah, he pulled my tongue. He was a mean little cuss. Well, that checks out, too. Now, question number three. Did this alleged monkey follow us into the house, present himself as an imposter called the Pasha of Shazam, and force me to drink a bottle of beer? He stared at me and twisted his head. Now, that sounds crazy to me. I think you must have dreamed it. Well, yes, that checks out, too. I remember saying over and over, never in my wildest dreams. But it was in my wildest dreams, Drover. Do you understand what this means? Why, it means you were dreaming, I guess. Exactly. And I won't be shot after all. Oh, happy day, Drover. The very best kind of a day is one in which you know that you're not going to be shot by a firing squad. Well, yeah, that kind of makes your day. Never thought about that. But, Hank, I've got some bad news. While you were asleep, a man from the circus came by and he got his monkey. He's gone. I'm sure Drover didn't understand my spasm of insane laughter since he hadn't participated in my dream. It took me several minutes to get control of myself. Then Drover went on. I thought you'd be sad, but I can already see that you're not. I filled my lungs with fresh, clean air, and I gave myself a good stretch. Well, Drover, as usual, there's a lesson to be learned from all of this. He said, all of what? And I expect you to make a note of it and refer to it in the future. Never open strange boxes. And Drover, leave a monkey business to the monkeys. And with that, we went streaking out into the home pasture to bark at the starlings and the blackbirds and to guide our ranch safely through another day. Well, that concludes this book. That's all about Hank the Cow Dog and monkey business. But don't fret. I've got another book handy, and tomorrow I'll start on it. It's a good book, too. I want to thank you all for watching. Tell your mom and daddies hello and tell them you love them. And one more time, Scarlett and Vivian... Happy birthday. Georgia, you keep an eye on them. All right? That's the big sister's job. Good night, y'all. I'll talk to you tomorrow.